All members of the Federal Executive Council seeking elective positions have been directed to resign their appointments before the 16th of May 2022. President Muhammadu Buhari gave the directive while presiding over the resumed meeting of the Council. Without doubt, there has been a raging controversy on the legality or otherwise of ministers seeking elective positions still keeping their appointments as members of the Federal Executive Council. At the last count, eight of them have obtained nomination as well as expression of interest forms to contest for governorship, national assembly, and presidential elections. That controversy has now been put to rest by President Muhammad Buhari. President, we have the right to appoint members of his cabinet, reshuffle them, replace them, and to that extent, all members of the Federal Reserve Council aspiring either to be president or senator or governor or any elective office must submit a state of resignation latest by the 16th of May 2022. The question was raised does it affect other appointees? And my position remains the same. As of this moment, my mandate from the president is that all members of the Federal Reserve Council vying for office will have to resign their appointments all up before 16th of May 2022. If there's going to be any amendment or any inclusion, you be informed in due course. While several memoranda from ministries, departments, and agencies have been considered and approved by the Council for enhanced service delivery to Nigerians. And on behalf of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Interior Minister Raouf Aregweshola secured approval for the purchase of 52 operational vehicles at 2.029 billion naira. Crime and criminality in Nigeria. Uh, it's my belief that you go a long way in protecting lives and property in Nigeria. The power sector, three major contracts were approved towards enhancing the performance of the national grid for improved power supply to consumers. Osobo and uh, Akure on those states. So the three states of that grid on that area have been uh, weak for some time. Also, they wanted to take KVA in um, uh, Akwanga and La Lafia and National State. So if we empower and, um, our grid properly, and given the encouragement the President and FEC has given us, we uh, promised Nigerians that uh, the grid will be enhanced and power supply to the country will improve. It will be recalled that due to the intermittent grip collapse recently, some parts of the country have been thrown into total darkness for some time. Hence, the need for the national grid to be reinvigorated towards effective power supply to Nigerians on a sustainable basis. And few hours after the directive, a presidential aspirant, Emeka Wajuba, has resigned his appointment as Minister of State for Education. Wajuba, who is seeking to run for president on the platform of the All Progressives Congress, APC, resigned from office on Wednesday in Abuja. The senior special assistant to the president of media and publicity, Garba Sheu, confirmed the minister's resignation to Channel Television. The announcement comes a few hours after President Muhammad Buhari ordered members of the Federal Executive Council seeking to buy for any elective position to drop their appointment. The Court of Appeal on Wednesday set aside the judgment of the Federal High Court in Umaya, Abia State, which voided the provision of Section 84, Subsection 2 of the Electoral Act 2022. A three-member panel of the court, headed by Justice Hama Akawu Barka, held that the Federal High Court Umaya had no jurisdiction to entertain the case because the plaintiff, Nduka Edede, lacked the local standard to have filed his suit in the first place. 
the appellate court added that Dede did not establish any cause of action to have warranted his approaching the court on the issue because he did not establish that he was directly affected by the provision. The Court of Appeal struck out the suit marked FHC slash UM slash CS slash 26 2022, which Dede filed before the Umaya court while determining the appeal on the merit. The appellate court, however, held that the provision is unconstitutional because it violates section 42, subsection 1A of the Constitution and denied a class of Nigerian citizens their right to participate in elections. The judgment was on, a, on the appeal filed by the PDP. The House of Representatives has passed an amendment to the Electoral Act 2022 to recognize statutory delegates at primaries, congresses, and conventions of political parties. The passage was in concurrence with the Senate, which had earlier on Tuesday held an emergency session to correct what the House called a fundamental error. The National Assembly passed the bill for the act while President Muhammad Buhari signed it into law. While political parties are close to conducting primaries to elect candidates for the 2023 general elections, the act did not provide for members elected into public offices and executives of the parties known as statutory delegates to participate and vote in the conventions, congresses, or meetings of parties. Without the provision by the law, President Buhari, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, members of the National Assembly, governors and their deputies, members of the State Houses of Assembly, chairmen of local government areas, councillors, executives of political parties, amongst others, would have been disenfranchised. Resuming from break on Tuesday, the Senate amended Section 84, subsection 8 of the Act, passing the first, second, and third reading, at a sitting. Auguste Governor Dakwa Biodun on Wednesday submitted the expression of interest and nomination forms for his re-election on the platform of the All Progressives Congress to the party leadership in Abuja. Governor Abiodun, who arrived at the International Conference Center Abuja, was received amidst pomp and pageantry as party stalwarts and loyalists praised the governor who is seeking a second term in office. The governor was accompanied by a large crowd, which also included elder statesmen and women, National Assembly members, cabinet members, political associates and supporters, among others. The governor, after submitting the nomination form, said that with the support from the masses, he is confident of victory during the March 11, 2023 governorship elections. He added that his administration is committed to the delivery of real dividends of democracy in all aspects of life to all citizens of the has helped to remodel the traditional institution in the state and the nation at large. Governor Abiodun made the remarks at the 88th birthday celebration of the monarch held at his country home in Ijebuode. Governor's Office Correspondent Yusuf Ghaniyu reports. <laughs> State Governor Prince Dakwa Abiodun arrived in the country home of Awuja Ali and Paramount of Ijebuland, about Dr. Sikiru Kayode Adetono to celebrate the Kutsensha King and revered monarch for attaining the age of 88 years. The governor noted that the monarch has become an institution by redefining leadership and leadership in traditional council, thus making him a reference point across the country. Dr. Dakwa was very purposeful, capable, brilliant. Honest, you are known for your forthrightness. He speaks for you everywhere we go. Deputy, on behalf of the people and government of your home state, we remain perpetually grateful to you for all you have done for this kingdom of ours and for the entire state and the nation Nigeria at large. The governor, while thanking Oba Adetono for his huge investment in the education sector, said his contributions to the development of the Olabison Obanjo University, OOU, especially the establishment of the Center for Leadership and Governance, is commendable. We can't thank you enough. Again, I repeat that you have become an institution, um, an 
girls who a point of reference for all KBCs anywhere in the world. KBC, God bless you. We thank you. We appreciate you. We grow up. See God for your life. I personally can't thank you enough for all you've done for me. Um, long before I even began to assume for this prestigious office, and what you did for me on my way to government house, and your prayers that are consistent for KBC, I am grateful, sir. The monarch thanked Governor Dr. Abiodun for his steadfastness and commitment to the entrenchment of good governance in the states. Thank you all for coming to share with you. Shapes everything as a vision. All of you, top down, every team, everybody in the process team. I don't know how I can thank you. The birthday celebration was attended by dignitaries, including the Deputy Governor, Engineer Noimo Salako Yedele, members of the State Executive Council, and traditional rulers across Ijebuland, led by the Dagburuwe of Idowa, Oba Yunusa Adekoya, among others. Yusuf Ganiyu, OGTV News. The Ogu State Government has warned the public and individuals who oftentimes unilaterally violate the 2021 Oba and Chiefs Law of the State in certifying their personal interests over and above their immediate communities. Therefore, in relation to this, the state government has directed the Olu of Agboja Doere in Adoduota local government to put on hold an installation ceremony at which he proposes to install ballots without due clearance from the 16th to 21st of May 2022. In a statement by the State Commissioner for Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, Honorable Afolabi Afuakwe, government further notes that this unwholesome act could lead to breakdown of law and order in the local government, especially in the community. It therefore warned members of the public not to associate or involve themselves in accepting unapproved chieftaincy titles. The Ogun State Government has called for the cooperation and support of the third tier of government in a bid to shore up the internally generated revenue of the state towards achieving its revenue target for the year. The state government equally reiterated that it would not undermine the autonomy of the local government administration. Commissioner for Finance and Chief Economic Advisor to the Governor, Mr. Dapo Kubade, just stated this at a meeting with the chairman and representatives of the 20 local government councils held in Abeokuta, the state capital. Okubade Jo, who noted that the monthly allocation from the federal government to local government in the state is grossly insufficient to meet its financial obligations, disclosed that the governor, Dakwa Biodun, led administration has always augmented the allocation every month for an even spread of dividends of democracy to all nooks and crannies of the state. At the beginning of this administration, His Excellency Prince Dr. Abdelno decided that uh, he is going to give to all local government what is due to them. He is going to recognize them as an independent top tier of government that should be recognized as such. And so, with the financial autonomy, of local government administration is sacrosanct because what we see recognized by law that is important that our people and that tier of government begin to recognize their relevance, particularly during democratic dispensation like now. While underscoring the importance of public-private partnership to the overall development of the state, Okubadejo admonished the local government administrators to desist from collecting unwholesome revenues from investors operating in their local government areas. He explained that such practice promotes unhealthy investor relations and amounts in some cases to double taxation, which affects the state's ease of doing business index ranking. According to him, revenue items such as tenement rates and others have been harmonized and taken care of by the land use and amenities charge. 
Also speaking at the meeting, the Commissioner for Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, Honorable Afolabi Afuakwe, appreciated the state government for the meeting, saying such interface would further engender deeper relationship between the two arms of government. The Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, alongside the Minister for Labor and Employment, Chris Ngege, will be hosting a meeting between the government and the Academic Staff Union of Universities, as well as all other registered trade unions in Nigerian universities on Thursday. Others to be present at the meeting are identified interest groups and civil society. In a message sent to the media, the ministry's head public Press and Public Relations, Olajide Oshundu, noted that Gambari will chair the meeting. In effect, the Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Agbola Gambari, will chair the meeting. The Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, ASUF, on Wednesday declared a two-week warning strike starting from Monday, May 16. The declaration of strike came after the expiration of the one-month ultimatum by ASUF to the federal government on April 4, which expired on May 4. Addressing journalists on the status of his engagement with government after its emergency National Executive Council meeting in Abuja, the president of ASUP, Anderson Ezebe, said that the decision to proceed on strike is as a result of the inability of government to address their nine-point demands. Ezebe called on the public to prevail on the government to do the needful within the two-week period so as to avoid an indefinite shutdown of the sector. Among the contentious issues are the non-release of the approved revitalization fund for the sector, non-release of arrears of the new minimum wage, non-release of the reviewed normative instruments for the institution and management and programs accreditation, the alleged sustained infractions in implementation of the provisions of the Federal Polytechnic Act as amended is also an issue. Other demands include the delay in the appointment of rectors, non-release of the scheme of service for polytechnics, continued victimization of union officers, among others. Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology in Ogun State, Professor Abayomi Arigbabu, said the present administration will continue to give the relevant support to our union schools in order to improve their performances during competitions. The commissioner said this in Abel Kuta while receiving the state Ionian schools, which include Abel Kuta Grammar School, Ijebu Ode Grammar School, Remo Secondary School, and Yewa College Ilaro for their presentation of trophies won at the just concluded Ionian Games held in Undo. Adigwabu posited that government continued intervention to improve and sustain education standard would ensure that learners in the state perform excellently well in their studies and competitions to emerge the best, saying the competition, which included both academic and sporting games, will help sharpen the mental and physical health and abilities of students. I'm happy about this, and I want to urge you to continue to do us proud. This administration um, has committed so much to education, and all this is also made possible by the cooperation, support, and commitment of our teachers and our principals. In his remarks, the principal of Abel Kuta Grammar School, Mr. Dare Shoriola, explained that the acronym Ionian was coined from the names of the five states competing, which were Ogun, Oshun, Ondo, Oyo, and Ekiti. Shoriola appreciated the governor for the massive support given to the success recorded at the recently held game, which took place at Manua Grammar School, Okitipupa, Ondo State, where the state won 45 out of the 63 trophies in the competition. Newly promoted middle-level officers in the Ogun State Civil and Public Service have been called upon to make training and retraining a must in their career progression without necessarily waiting for their employers. Else, they will not improve in their chosen fields. The head of service, Dr. Nafiwa Igoro, made the call while declaring open a two-day capacity building workshop for newly promoted middle-level officers with the theme entrenching job ethics and productivity competences in public offices 
put together by the Bureau of Establishments and Training in collaboration with the Olavisi Onobanjo University Consultancy Services held at the Staff Development Center, Okelewo Abeokuta. According to him, officers must expose themselves to continuous training and retraining and re-retraining to increase their productivity as they evolve strategies for optimal results and in turn move the civil service to higher heights. In his remarks, the Permanent Secretary, Civil Service Commission, Mr. Adedai Oshomoye, enjoined the participants to brace up for future challenges in their various workplaces, be good participants, and make government see improvements in their performances for the betterment of the service. Mr. Oshomoye said it is imperative to train the newly promoted officers in order to acquaint them with new trends of the civil service guiding their cadres. On his part, the lead facilitator, who is the coordinator of OOU Consultancy Service, Professor Adebi Yabosede, congratulated Ogun State for being the first in human capital development and added that the state has displayed a high level of proactiveness in this area as not being proactive breeds mediocrity in the system. Earlier, in a welcome address, the Permanent Secretary, Bureau of Establishments and Training, Mrs. Lydia Afajoumbo, said, Every promotion comes with new challenges, and for such to be carefully surmounted, new skills, knowledge of knowledge, and change of mindset are needed to move on. To further tackle the act of open defecation in the society, the current administration in Ogun State will not relent in its efforts as necessary measures have been put in place to bring it to a stop. Wife of Ogun State Governor Mrs. Bamidele Abiodu gave this assertion while dialoguing with members of the Ogun State Rural Water Supply and Sanitation Agency, Medical Women Association, and Public Health in the Ministry, Public Health State in the Ministry of Health, who paid a courtesy call on our in our office, Abel Kuta, Adebola Oshomoji reports. Nigeria is among the nations in the world with highest number of people practicing open defecation. Towards achieving an open defecation-free country will be to introduce different approaches that will put an end to it. Ogun State Rural Water Supply and Sanitation Agency, Medical Women Association, and Public Health in the Ministry of Health sought area of possible partnership and collaboration with the wife of Ogun State Governor. Mrs. Bamidele Abiodun. In preparation for Kenya local government, uh, uh, I'm happy to inform you that there's mass tenor construction in Kenya, uh, uh, in Kenya local government now. We are among the political world in Kenya. We conducted two um, training of all the uh, West officers in the state. We want to say, Ma, that we want to identify with you in all that you need to do, particularly when it comes to supporting women and children. We'd also like to partner with you in all health related programs in order to contribute our quota to the development of our dear state. In our response, Mrs. Abiodun pledged a full support in creating an enabling environment for the smooth operations of health workers in the state. And as you know, this is a year of politics. Elections are coming. However, this does not mean that our programs will stop, especially those that have to do with public health, our pregnant women, Children under the age of five, the elderly, and other vulnerable groups need our continued help. Therefore, our work must continue, 
and you have my full support in anything that you're doing. Mrs. Abiodun thereafter charged all stakeholders in health sector to join her in the race to put an end to the illicit practice. Adebola Oshomoji, OGTV News. All the councillors of the five local governments of Ogun West Senatorial District have unanimously spoken in one voice to endorse the second term of Prince Dakwabiodun led government in Ogun State and as well endorsed Senator Solomon Adiola Olamileko Yayi for the Ogun West Senatorial District. The endorsement was done at the Governor's Lodge, Ilaro, Yewa South local government area of the state. <laughs> councillors from all the five local government areas that make up Ogun West Senatorial District and they are here to pledge their support for the second term bid of Prince Dakbo, a led government in Ogun State. Welcoming all the 59 councillors to the meeting, Honorable Safiu Talabi said the infrastructural turnaround being witnessed by the people of Ogun West Senatorial District is enough to endorse Prince Dakbo Abiodun for the second time in office. I want In the course of the meeting, motion for adoption was moved for the endorsement of Prince Dakwa Abiodun for the second time in office and Senator Solomon Adiola Olamile Koyai for the senatorial seat during the forthcoming general elections. At the end of the meeting, a communique was issued stating that Prince Dakwa Abiodun and Senator Solomon Olamile Adiola Yai have been endorsed the second term and for the senatorial seat in Ogu West. Goodwill messages from the representatives of all the five local governments present at the occasion. The 2022 third, synod, third session of the fifth synod of the Diocese of Egba West, Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, is slated to start from Thursday, 12th May to Sunday, 15th May 2022 at the Holy Trinity Anglican Church, Bagura, Agolka, Abeokuta. The Synod with the theme, I have seen the Lord, would commence with an opening service where Right Reverend Aloysius Eze Agbo, Diocesan Bishop of Nsuka, will deliver the message. In a statement by the Diocesan Communicator, Basho Festus Kaide, other features of the Synod includes presentation and launch of Bishop's Charge on Friday, May 13, with other plenary sessions and Synod activities to run through Saturday, May 14, 2022. The closing and thanksgiving service will hold on Sunday, May 15, 2022, at the Holy Trinity Anglican Church, Bagura, with Right Reverend Babatunde Ogubanwo of Ijebu Southwest Diocese of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion delivering the homily. Eminent personalities, including the Governor of Ogun State, Prince Dakwa Abiodun, Elaki and Paramount Rula of Egwaland, Oba Dedo Badibo, Agura of Bagura Land, Oba Babajide Bakre, among others, will grace the Synod. 
The federal government in its continuous efforts to increase the patronage of Made in Nigeria goods has appealed to citizens to implement the effort to propel industrial development and economic growth. Ogun State Director, National Orientation Agency, Mr. Kolawoli Obadino, made the appeal during the sensitization campaign on patronizing Nigerian-made products and services held at Easy Life Event Center, E4, Ogun State. Ronke Adeyemi reports. Since 2006, the National Orientation Agency has been sensitizing and reorientating people through various advocacy campaigns on patronizing made in Nigeria goods and services. The manufacturing sector has since then improved immensely due to steps taken by the federal government to harness local materials and resources and promote local content. For further orientation, the agency organized a sensitization campaign on patronizing Nigeria products for stakeholders, entrepreneurs, and industrialists. Director, National Orientation Agency, Ogun State, Mr. Kolawole Obadino, emphasized that it's about time to declare the era of raw material export oriented economy over. Some of the shoes I have at home is made in about, but they will write made in Italy. That means they don't have confidence in their, in you because they said that you know, they know that you are looking for made in Italy. Whatever we are growing, let us be eating it. Whatever we are making here, let us be using it. Chairman, if for local government, Honorable Kikelo Modelano, represented by a personal assistant, Richard Adeni, highlighted the importance of patronizing made in Nigeria goods. It is going to fasten the growth of our nations logically. It is going to make sure that the nation develops, the nation grows fast, and we are, we are going to move from underdeveloped in the country to a developed country. Stakeholders lauded the initiative. Some people are getting to know what is happening. Some don't really know that when you patronize made in Nigeria goods, it will favor them or boost the economy or even the uh, local people around will benefit from it. Even it will create job for others. So here we are, we don't patronize ourselves, we don't say anything good, even the nation, we don't say anything good. But we thank God for a kind of initiative like this that is encouraging us by sensitizing us to patronize our own. After a brief tour to look at the various Nigerian goods showcased, the program was concluded with an interactive session at Derunke Adeyemi, OGTV News. The National Technology Day is celebrated every 11th day of May. From the wheel to smart smartphones, the day honors technological achievements that impact lives daily. Technologically inclined persons in Ogun State rolled out their efforts so far at encouraging the younger generation. In this report, Margaret Okunlola takes a look at the endless contributions of technologically related persons, including researchers and engineers. Our report. Technology is the application of scientific knowledge to the practical aims of human life in order to honor the endless contributions of everyone related to the field of science and technology. 11th of May is celebrated as the National Technology Day not only scientists, but researchers and engineers. In the day-to-day -day activities, one cannot take a step without coming in contact with the form of it as the world is abuzz with technology. Tech jobs are among the strongest and fastest growing divisions as technology is at the center of activities these days. A director in the Ogun State Bureau of Information Technology, Mrs. Olatsundu Adekunte, noted the importance of channeling the interest of the younger generation to information technology. There are still lots of things that are still coming in the future. And for them to have the knowledge of what is coming in the future, they must get into the current thing now. And it's for them to be digitally uh, inclined. And that digital literacy is very important for anybody. Taking a cue from Ogun Tech Hub, an open lab designed by the current administration to ignite creative and innovative social ventures. The special assistant to Ogun State Governor on Information, Communication and Technology, Olakunle Akibola, said, All hands are on deck to promote technology in the state by encouraging technologists 
tech companies, social entrepreneurs, and impact investors to create new state social programs. This ecosystem is working very, very well. Uh, we have a number of startups with one of our, our venture capitalist companies, Get Fund Me, um, that uh, that is helping um, you, you to have ideas. Um, so we, we, we bring them in here, we nurture them, um, we show them the path in sometimes in uh, uh, in raising funds for them to be able to um, actualize their goals. The education sector is not left out in the technological advancement as the special advisor to Ogun State's Governor on Technical and Vocational Education, Professor Joseph Odemuiwa, reviewed technological progress in technical schools in the state so far. We encourage our young ones to ensure that they use their hands to do something that they can be proud of. That, okay, I've been able to do this. I made this. So basic education is being focused. And also in, 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 the, secondary, uh, in the secondary education level, we're ensuring that the three subjects that are made compulsory by the National Policy on Education is completely focused here, so that at least a secondary school leaver must be a specialist in a trade subject. Experts all agreed that if technology is channeled in the right place, it can be used for nation building as against the havoc it is currently doing among the younger generation. Margaret Okunola, OGTV News. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, has called on retired officers of the Nigerian Army to feel free to offer opinions and suggestions that could be of benefit in the ongoing operations to tackle insecurity in the country. General Yahya made the clarion call at the Combat Arms Training Week 2022 with the theme, Effective Combat Arms Maneuver, a Panacea for Success in Battle. While declaring the event open, the Chief of Army Staff stated that combat arms are key to the operational activities of the Army, adding that the Nigerian Army operations revolve around the combat arms. He noted that a lot of operational successes are being achieved in the various theaters of operation, though there may be some isolated incidents. The Chief of Army Staff explained that training is key to human development, performance, and productivity. He maintained that the Nigerian Army will continue to partner with all relevant stakeholders to sustain training and build the capacity of personnel to enhance efficiency. General Yahya appreciated the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, President Muhammadu Buhari, for his untiring support to the Nigerian Army and pledged the unalloyed loyalty of the troops. An explosion has rocked the headquarters of the 6th Brigade Nigerian Army located in Jalingo, the Taraba State Capital. The incident took place in the backyard of the building, but no casualty was recorded. The Army has so far barricaded the roads leading to the axis of the 6th Brigade Nigerian Army headquarters to forestall further attempts on their lives. No statements has emanated from the Brigade Commander as to what transpired. The explosion adds to the increasing cases of bombings in the northeastern state. Late last month, there were two bombing incidents in the space of four days in Taraba State. One of them, which the terrorist group ISWAP took responsibility for, killed at least six persons. You're watching OGTV News. Business News is next after this time out. It's good to have you join us on the business segment of the news. Our top business stories. The total net credit by the Nigerian banking sector to the government rose by 2.2 trillion naira in the first quarter ended March 2022 to 16.32 trillion naira. Figures obtained from the Central Bank of Nigeria's data on money and credit statistics have shown. According to the data, the net credit to the government rose from 14.12 trillion naira as of the end of January 2022 to 14.72 trillion naira as of the end of February 2022. 
The figure showed that this was an increase from the first quarter figure of 2021. It showed that the net credit of the government rose from 12.09 trillion naira, 12.59 trillion naira, and 12.07 trillion naira in January, February, and March 2021, respectively. A new report by the Nigerian Economic Summit Group and the Open Society Initiative for West Africa has disclosed that Nigeria and 10 other economic community of West African state countries are currently in debt distress. The 10 other countries are Benin, Burkina Faso, Cabo Verde, the Gambia, Ghana, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia, Niger, Senegal, and Togo. The report, titled Steps Management Restricting and Sustainability in ECOWAS, was recently learned at the Debt Management Office in Abuja. According to the report, a financial crisis in Nigeria can transit other countries in the ECOWAS region. It was further disclosed in the report that the public debt accumulation in the region is unsustainable and the need to address and advance the looming debt crisis is emphasized. Nigerian paper mills have collapsed years after privatization, forcing the economy to depend on imported papers for its needs. According to data from the National Bureau of Statistics data, Nigeria imported paper and its allied products worth 296.696 billion naira between July and December 2021, while paper valued at 188.137 billion naira was imported in the third quarter of 2021. Import in the last quarter of the year was estimated at 108.559 billion naira. Nigeria once had three paper mills in the country, the Nigerian Paper Mill Limited, located in Jeba, Kwara State, the Nigerian New Spirit Manufacturing Company Limited, Aqua Ibom, and Nigerian National Paper Manufacturing Company Limited in Ogun State but the mills are no longer operating, even at half of their capacities. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, has said Central Bank across Nigeria and other parts of the world are trying to start a Nigerian's e-Naira project. Emefiele said this during an experience sharing tour of the CBN CBDC e-Naira by officials of the Bank of Uganda in Abuja. Amifile said the body feels delighted on what it is doing in the area of the central bank digital currency, noting that effort in the area of e Naira is attracting the interest of different countries in the world. He noted that the CBN had been receiving a lot of inquiries from central banks in Africa and different parts of the world who were trying to understand what the bank was doing. And that brings us to the end of the business segment of the news. We now go back to Tunji for the rest of the news.